Hey everyone, my name is uh, Tomer Cohen and today I'm here to speak with you about low-level Android automation with ADB. Um, before, my, like, before I start, I'd like to, to start my talks and presentations with uh, the WIFM. WIFM stands for uh, what's in it for me and I want to speak a little bit about uh, what, what I want you to get out of this uh, presentation. So, um, my biggest goal here is to get you to better understanding uh, um, how uh, ADB works, how to use it, um, some cool commands that uh, you might um, like maybe you don't know um, and I'm going to share with you. Um, and then in the end I'm going to show a little bit uh, how I uh, did automation with ADB and Python. Okay, so let's dive into it. You recognize this guy? <laughs> this is me, um, like 20 years ago. My name is Tomer, uh, I'm from Israel, I'm 23 years old. I've been automating since uh, 2014, almost five years now. And right now I'm uh, Android automation team leader in my organization, which means everything uh, that is related to Android products uh, is going through my, um, my automation infrastructure. And um, more than that, I help other teams in the organization achieve better automation. Um, if it's just uh, choosing the right tool or uh, with automation design and everything. And in my free time, I like to write. So I created a, a blog um, about uh, uh, automation uh, and uh, automation design, software design in general. Um, you can join, although 99% of, um, of the content is in Hebrew, uh, my language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, oh, it was flipped. Weird. Never mind. So I'll speak about my journey um, a little bit. And I don't know what happened to the slide, so you just look at me. Um, <laughs> my journey started, as I said, almost five years ago. Um, I started as a manual uh, tester in the Android QA team. And we tested all the Android products. The Android products in my organization, they were pretty interesting. They didn't have any graphic user interface. Okay, there were just services running in the background. Okay, and what the, these, like, what these um, products, the, what they were doing was just running in the background, interacting with uh, other processes, um, with other uh, Android uh, um, system services that are running and like, um, taking information about the system. And it was some kind of like a, um, security product, some kind of like an antivirus that you don't, you don't see it running and you don't see its uh, graphic user interface, but you know it's working in the background. And this product was very interesting. Um, how would you test a product like this? What would you do to communicate with it? So we have, um, we have ADB, okay? We used ADB for the communication um, with the product, with everything uh, um, that is connected to the device. And with ADB, we uh, were able to um, know everything we wanted about uh, what's going on uh, under the hood, what we don't see inside the device. So uh, who is familiar with ADB? Okay, most of you. Um, so ADB is the Android debug bridge. Okay, it was developed by Google uh, in order for uh, testers and developers to have uh, um, some kind of some kind of a tool for communic command line tool for communicating um, with Android devices. Okay, so um, we used ADB for this communication, and I'm going to show you in in this talk. I'm going to show you how. We used it and how we performed um, basic, I'm going to perform basic automation script with it. Uh, so we used it manually at the beginning and after a few months, my team leader came to me and said, uh, listen, Tomer, uh, we want to create ourselves, uh, we have to create ourselves our own um, automation infrastructure and I want you to find one, you know what, uh, what we need to test, you, you know what, uh, how the product works, I need you to find something uh, for us or to create. 
So I went to the internet and looked for Android uh, testing, Android automated uh, testing tools, and there was a very long list. You can look at, like tens of, uh, of uh, tools, and the list was very overwhelming, and I didn't know what to choose, but I noticed um, an interesting fact that 99% of, the, of these tools are for the uh, higher level of the device, like for the graphic user interface, for interaction with the device as a regular user. Like as, as a user, they're taking the device and, and pressing buttons and, and do, do things with, with the device. And there was nothing for, or there were a little bit, but it was nothing um, really special for, uh, for interaction with the operating system. So um, what we needed is uh, some lower level or low level tool for testing the, um, for testing the applications. So I wanted to go briefly about what, uh, what do I mean by low level, auto by low level automation because um, there are many, uh, you can look at it in many ways. So I'll start by saying what it's not. Low level automation is not something, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the, prog with the programming language. It's not uh, an assembly code that uh, tests uh, some kind of a product and it's not, a pro it's, and it's not uh, an automation that some kind of automation code that tests product that is written in assembly or um, in other uh, programming, low level programming language. It's just all about the abstraction layers. Okay, almost every software we see out there these days have, um, is built, like almost every, is built uh, with layers of abstraction. Okay, we uh, as users use almost always uh, the highest level. Okay, if it's the phone, we use the screen. If it's uh, the, um, I don't know, we can use the voice. We can use uh, many, many kinds of, uh, of interactions with the highest level. And down the way until we get to the actual logic that is running behind the scenes, there is a long way to go, right? And low level automation to my eyes is just addressing or interaction with the, um, the lower level. Okay, just being closer to your logic, being closer to what you really want to have, okay? And it has its power. We used low-level automation or we used a low-level tool because we didn't have any choice, because we didn't have any um, UI, okay? We didn't have any graphic user interface, GUI. So what do, you, what do we think about, what do you think about uh, low-level automation? Do you think it's good? Do you think you should have it? shouldn't have it, you should go straight from the um, highest level and then go down. Someone? Yeah, again? Yeah, it depends on the requirement, right. Um, I say in many cases, not always, but it can help you uh, with achieving more reliable code. Okay, because when you use many layers of abstraction, when you interact with many layers of abstraction, uh, it, can, it means you run more code, and I see more code as more potential bugs. And when you interact with the lower levels, you don't always have to have all the application and all the system up and running. You maybe can just interact with what you want. So uh, for, this, uh, for this thing, uh, another thing, um, this is, um, a good example for a layered, uh, layered architecture automation, uh, layered architecture uh, um, of uh, the oper Android operating system, which uh, we as users use uh, the application framework, and down the way, uh, there is even Linux kernel that is running under the hood, and with ADB, actually, you can interact with different, um, with different uh, layers, and you can interact with Android services, and I'm going to show you how, uh, how we do it in a few moments. So uh, we chose the Android Debug Bridge, um, and it's just some kind of uh, command line tool, okay, that uh, what we used to make it an automation tool was just wrapping it with, uh, um, with almost any programming language you have, a, you have a way to just send um, a command to the terminal, to the command line, and we just dropped and uh, added ADB at the beginning of the command, and I'm going to show you in a second. And now any command you send to the command line is starting with ADB and the command you want to send. 
Okay, and this was the basic infrastructure, and we expanded it as we are, as we are going. So, a little about the architecture or how things are connected behind the scenes, or how it works. Uh, ADB has three main elements. The first one is the client, which is responsible for the um, for the for creating the connections, for creating the um, the requests to the device. Okay, and there is a server. ADB server is some kind of a process that is running. You can start it manually, or it's just start running when uh, um, when when you start using it. And when you use a command or you send a command from the client, it looks for a, a server that is running on port uh, 5037, and uh, it looks for uh, for uh, it, it tries to communicate with the server, and then the server creates. Um, sends the, the commands to the ADB daemon, which is just a process that is running on the device, listening to the commands, and then uh, response to uh, the server and then back to the client. And don't worry if it was a little bit complicated because I created a diagram. Okay, so I have here a host with two uh, Android devices connected to it. Sorry for the, for the quality of the diagram, I'm not so good at this. Uh, Things um, we have uh, these two uh, devices, and when I start uh, the ADB server, and when I start using ADB, the ADB server is start running on the computer, and we're going to see it in a second. And then I can create uh, a connection or just send a command from the client, and it's going from the server to the ADB dim. And the server has many roles here. But uh, a cool, cool thing it gives us is just the ability to uh, connect from other computers to devices that are connected to a host. Just think about it. If, if you are in, a, let's say, in your office, okay, and there are many computers, you can just communicate from a computer that is, sent, that is sitting in another room to your, your, your uh, devices in your room, okay? And it gives you some kind, like in, in, my, uh, in my organization, we use this to create some kind of an in internal cloud of, of our, our organization to just connect to other computers. It was pretty cool. Um, so with this architecture, you can just connect from uh, the cl client to the server and specify the host of the devices and specify the, which device you want to use. And then the, the request is going to the device and back. OK? Um, so this is the architecture. So um, ADB has many, many commands. OK? And I don't know all of them. And uh, it's like very, uh, they have big interface and many things you can do. I created here what I call ADB cheat sheet with, with uh, what it is just I think uh, these are the most uh, used commands. And we're going to see not all of them, but I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit of what you can do with, uh, with the ADB um, on a device. We'll start by doing it manually, and then I'm going to show you how we created automation with it. So uh, we have here, in these commands, we have a way to, um, con to see the connected devices, to create a connection to a specific device, to just uh, push files, pull files, install applications, uninstall, enter the device shell, like run, run um, being on the device's shell and run uh, some kind of Linux commands to the device. Um, input events like, uh, like uh, buttons and uh, screen and swipe and tapping, taking screenshots, uh, looking at uh, uh, in the services and, and the information that, are, that of the services that are running behind the scenes, what's going on inside the, um, the operating system. We have access to all of it with ADB. And we can even uh, see the lowcut, which is one of the most powerful tools for testers as I see it, um, which shows you all the log. And you can just, uh, if you're a tester, you can just uh, go to your developer or to the, the guy who develops the, um, your product and say, listen, Please write logs to the logout, and you can filter it and, and, and see everything there that everything is working as expected. Okay? So there are many things, and let's start for, uh, with the live demo, and uh, I hope 
I didn't prepare any, I haven't prepared any, uh, any backup uh, video, but uh, let's start by, uh, by looking at what we can do with it. So here we have, uh, here we have an Android uh, emulator, and here I have uh, some kind of a command line, like the CMD, and I use ADB. This is the command line tool, and we have here uh, many things we can do with the, with the device. Uh, um, we saw many um, people use uh, port forwarding for ADB, uh, one of the the best uh, tools and one of the best thing uh, I use is the ADB shell. So with ADB devices, we can see actually the devices that are connected to my computer, okay? I can kill the server and show you that when I start using the devices, when I start uh, using ADB when the server is down, it just starts automatically. You see it's starting uh, at, uh, now at uh, TCP 5037. Okay, and now I have it running. So with ADB, I can enter, let's say, uh, the shell of the device. Okay, and we can do many things. Now we have, for example, uh, access to the file system. We can do whatever we want. Uh, I can go uh, to, uh, let's say, to a directory to see files there, to remove um, file. Okay, to do whatever I want with this, and it gives you like really great debugging option for the um, for the device. Um, another cool tool that we have inside the inside of the ADB shell is the dumpsys, which is the um, current state of the device of the look how long it is. It just gives you the, all the information um, available about that the operating system, what's going on right now um, behind the scenes that you cannot uh, necessarily see. So um, it was a very long list of, uh, of uh, output. I can look at the dumpsys-l command, which shows me only the services I have, okay? And this is interesting, because if you have a, uh, like a mobile application that does many things behind the scenes that you are not necessarily aware of, here you can start um, researching and understanding what's going on. Like, if I go and there are all the services here, I can ask for a specific service. For example, I want to know about the battery. So we have here the battery, you see? And I can just say dumpsys battery. And I have here all the battery options, okay? I can go with the window to see what's going on on the screen. I can do, uh, I can go, I, I can do actually whatever I want. What, anything that is going inside the device, almost anything, um, I can have access from it, okay? So it's a pretty powerful tool. And now I want to show you uh, shortly how, how we used it uh, for uh, automation, uh, which was pretty cool in my eyes. So, you have any questions until now? Okay. So we just took Python, and you can do it really with almost any programming language out there. Um, Python was the only language uh, in my organization was the most common language uh, that we used. So we took Python and uh, and just wrapped it with these three uh, methods as the basic infrastructure. Um, the first one, as you can see, is the subprocess uh, get output, which just opens the process of the command line terminal, whatever it is, and send the command to it and gives you the, the, um, the output. And then um, we wrapped it with a method we called adb command. Adb command uh, is just a local command with adb in the beginning, as I said earlier. And then we added the adb shell command, which will help, will help us to um, cre to create a shell command and an interaction with the device's shell. So um, here's the basic infrastructure. It took us five minutes to write. It, you don't have to understand a lot um, in order to, to use it. Um, it's, it's very simple and, and, and really 
we, we, it took us a really short uh, amount of time and um, we enjoyed it a lot. So now I'm going to just to show uh, a little like short script or a scenario that I, uh, I created. I'm not going to implement it. Now it's already implemented, but here we're going to, with, Py with ADB and Python, we're going to install an application to open the application to see if the application was uh, written, like uh, an activity of the application was written in the logs. And then we're going to take a screenshot and pull it to our computer, okay? And it's just a basic scenario just for you to see how easy it is. So here's the device and here's the scenario and let's go briefly about how, how we implemented it or how, how it's done. So, you can see? Yeah. Is it okay like this? Uh, so here we have the local command. I just added the, like the logs to, so you can see the, the output on the screen, the ADB, the shell command, and then here's the main scenario, okay? I just added slips everywhere so you can see it on the screen so it won't be too fast. Um, I added here another method, uh, install app. Again, for you to see how easy it is, we just um, wrapped the ADB command with install. You can see it here. And now we have a install app. We added, I, I downloaded the um, flashlight application, for example, and we're installing the application. We open it, we're opening it with, uh, with monkey. You can, there are a few ways to open an application, but we open it this way. Um, Again, it can be wrapped with another method. It, it, it's very, very simple. Um, then we took the log. We check if flashlight is in the log. If it is, we print scenario succeeded. Um, sleep for a little, and then um, we're taking the screenshot. And again, very easy interface. Just say screen cap minus p and where I want it. And then I pull it, okay? just by saying what I want to pull and to where. And then I run it. So let's see how it works. Oh. So here I have the script. Uh, and we're going to see, first I want to do something. I just want first to uninstall the application. I can do it with uh, the PM. PM is another uh, tool ADB uh, gives us. When I, uh, I can do PM list packages, for example. And then with P wait a second, I can't, uh, okay. PM list packages gives us all the applications that are, all the package names of the application that are installed. I copy this and say PM uninstall for this application and it will, be set, it will say success. If I try to do it again, it throws me an exception, that unknown package. Okay, we can see it here. So, um, let's just run the scenario and see how it's working. So it says installing um, the device, installing the application, open the application. Now it uh, asks me to allow uh, pictures, or I don't know, but here it sends, uh, I want uh, the lockout and I check in the lockout if it exists, and it is, and it says scenario succeeded. And then we're taking a screen capture of the, of the uh, um, device and pull it, and now we should be able to see um, two files in uh, the temp directory. Um, one of them is the logging file, and the second is the uh, screenshot demo. Okay, so here's the logging file. It's just the lockout of everything, and it just, looked in there for it. And here uh, is the uh, screenshot demo and we can see that we got the, this, uh, um, this message. And this is actually how you um, use, how you simply use uh, ADB and how you can wrap it for automation. And Appium did it as well with the Appium uh, ADB project which is written in a node. I recommend you taking a look at it. They have many implementations there. Um, and actually that's about, uh, about ADB. To sum up, I want you to, I want, uh, to, to say 
just try not to kill, uh, um, try not to take a cannon to, in order to kill a mosquito because um, many times we take big tools that are not necessarily the correct tools for, for us and we just should think um, if there's a smaller tool that can perform our task and maybe will fit us more as here the automation, the low-level automation tool that I took or I created. Thank you very much.